Hello, nice to see you again. Thanks for joining me. Um, today I'm out in the woods with the dog. There she is, down there. And I've been thinking a lot about videos that I've posted recently and also things that I've been saying. And I thought, well, you know, you get a lot of videos on uh, Facebook and all the other social media sites, sitting in your lounge or in your kitchen. And I thought today I would share with you my special place. And this is where I come when I want to think about things, when I want to escape the world. Um, I come to my local country park with the dog um, and I walk around and process stuff in my head, enjoy nature, because quite frankly, doing the videos at home and stuff like that, sitting in the kitchen with all the bits and pieces around me, what we're taught to do is lovely, but there is no better place than nature's, nature's place. I mean, just look at it. It's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful place to be. And it gives me a sense of freedom, space, and all the rest of it. And I've spoken recently about my toolbox. So, um, when I was receiving my grief recovery training, and I have to thank Carol Henderson for that because it's another big chunk of what changed my life. Um, she talked about toolboxes, she talked about what you've got in your box, and she talked about how you do, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the dog, how you, um, what is in your toolbox to help you sort of process stuff in life process grief process things that happen and stuff like that and a lot of the time we have the wrong tool so it's like trying to paint a room with a hammer <laughs> and I say a rolling pin <laughs> and a bucket um, if you're trying to paint a room with that you're not gonna get very far and it's all gonna go horribly wrong and it's gonna make a horrible horrible mess so one of the things in my toolbox to help me deal with grief is the grief recovery method of which I'm going to talk about today from grief to recovery. Um, I, I was driving here in my car this morning and I thought I'm doing a video, what can I do, sit at home, do this, plan this, plan that. I thought do you know what, I'm going to do it out in the woods, I'm going to do it off the cuff like I normally do. Um, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable talking to the talking talking to myself on the phone. Well, actually, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> and um, I've actually got my dog for company today. And um, if I stop and wave at anybody, it's because I'm near a public footpath. <laughs> so, um, but I thought I would use nature's um, backdrop for my talk today because it's much prettier. Well, my kitchen's nice, but it's much prettier. Um, I'm also purposely standing here today and in the background, you might be able to see it, I'm near the crematorium, I'm near the graveyard in Swindon and I picked it on purpose because I thought well you know people fear those places and find them, some people, not everybody, so I can only imagine what, what anybody's feeling but from my um, experience, what I have, you get this sort of sense of <gasps> about it. So I'm going to stand here with it in the background today and say, actually, I quite like graveyards because it's full of history. It's full of um, love and history and it's full of life, life that was lived. So that's what I think of graveyards as. And when I go, I, we've got one near us and we have a little walk around it and we look at all the names and Flo asks about it. And it's really nice that you get a sense of sort of peace there because people have lived a life. Some people have lived very different lives to us. And it's just, I just don't know. I just, I really, <laughs> maybe I'm a bit strange. <laughs> Those of you who know me, I know I am a bit strange. <laughs> um, it gives me a sense of peace, so I, I quite like them. You know, it's it's they're, they're quite peaceful. You don't get sort of people running through and yelling. You actually get you get people that just the dog's chewing a stick. That's what I'm looking at. My like just get wedged in a gob. Um, it, it just gives you a sense of peace. Um, I've also been thinking about 
a lot recently about my my family who I haven't seen much this year because of Covid. I haven't seen Marnie Glenn much. Um, I haven't seen Debbie, Kim, uh, Karen and so that upsets me and there you go. I'm being honest about how I feel and I miss them. So this today is also um, to say um, hello to you all and I love you all. I miss you. The dog's still chewing the bloody stick. <laughs> um, and I know that they've been going through their own um, things at the moment. So um, sending you all love and wishes. So from grief to recovery. Um, we talked a lot, of, I've talked a lot about grief and what it means to me, um, the journey that I've taken and now I'm going to share a little bit of how I went through that journey. So the grief recovery is a series of small steps and um, this is what's advertised, this is what we advertise and um, basically it's the book which I've shown you, the purple book, it might look um, uninspiring, a purple book, but that book is full of goodies, lots and lots of goodies. Um, anything in life that you do, warn you now, anything that you want to succeed in or anything that is worth doing is going to be hard work and if you want it, you do it. And um, so the book talks about at the beginning it talks about grief and how we deal with it in the modern day uh, it talks about the six myths which i've mentioned if you want to know a bit more about them they're all on my facebook page there's references to them it's in the book it's also on the grief recovery website um and how they are unhelpful so i'm checking the dog hasn't got it wedged in the gob <laughs> and um it also then goes on to talk about how that affects us, how it affects us emotionally, how it affects us physically, spiritually, and all the rest. Um, so it's an it's, so it educates you. So you, you've, the first three sessions is education, and I was in there thinking, come on, get on with it, I want to get... But actually the education about the background stuff is really, really, really important. The next step you go on to is what they call a loss history graph. Basically, you get a bit of paper out and you put all your losses on it. And when I did mine, I was like, yeah, that's a lot of losses. There was about 40 plus on there, uh, just from anything from um, the, the death of someone to the loss of my health um, through uh, having fibromyalgia and a whole host of other stuff, um, which I'm not really going to go into detail today because it'll take too long. And then the next step they take you through is how to convert that into what they call, you pick, a, you pick a loss, you pick a significant loss, and then you work on that. And you work on it by um, plotting it on a graph again. Um, and you then write the letter to go with that. That's very simplistic. It's a lot more in depth than that. And a lot of it's to do with the language that you use. Um, this method has been tried and tested for over 40 years. This was being developed when I was a little girl and the man that developed it, John James, did it because he lost his baby son when he, when he was two days old. And he went out searching for books about grief and how, you know, what could help him. And he didn't find the book that he wanted. So instead of keep searching, he wrote the book and the book is the grief recovery method. And you, you know, you, you, you say this little purple book is, is like you read it and you think, yeah, you need to work with someone on it. Someone like me, I'm an advanced grief recovery specialist. Not only have I read the book, done the training, I've also been through the program myself. And that is why I'm standing here today saying, it is well worth a look. It's well worth picking up the phone, calling a grief recovery specialist and asking them about it, telling them a bit about reaching out and telling them a little bit about what you've been through and seeing if it, if it resonates with you and it's seeing if it's something that works for you. It may work for you, it may not, but at least you're doing something. So if today you're feeling low or you know someone that is, pass on this video to them. Um, the grief recovery website is, um, 
griefuk.org and, and Carol if you're watching this and I've got that wrong I'm really sorry because this is all off the cuff um, but if you put it into um, Google and do a search for grief recovery method it will bring up our beautiful new website which is beautiful and Ian Henderson well done and the rest of the team behind it Matt and the rest of the guys you guys are fantastic the support we get from them as a grief recovery specialist it's just second to none I've got to add that because I run my own business and it's a credibly lonely place to be when you're running your own business and you've got staff the reason another reason I went for the grief recovery method is because the support behind us is immense you know you don't just get qualified as a grief recovery specialist and then off you trot the support and the love within the within the group is just unbelievable and if you're struggling you can always pick up the phone there's always someone there so we practice what we preach not just from um the grief recovery method but the team behind it is is is, is immense so you know I'm hoping that one person will reach out and have a look at the website, have a look at my microsite, my website, my Facebook page. Um, I've got, I'm, I'm sort of plastered all over social media, which I never would have done if, um, if I hadn't done the grief recovery method and hadn't completed on stuff. And I will talk about completions another time. So you'll have to come back if you want to know more. I wish you a good day and I hope that your surroundings are as beautiful as mine. There's Nala, wherever she is, chewing a stick. She's still chewing that stick. It's got her into a lot of trouble recently, I have to say. And um, please keep well. If you're feeling low, reach out to a friend, reach out to someone. My number is on my Facebook page, on my website, if you want to have a natter. Honestly, I'm, I'm here to help. So pick up the phone, give us a ring. Hopefully see you soon. Bye.